to this week's live coaching call. Apologies, video is not on. Yeah. What is it not working? Yes, but... yeah, it is now. Apologies, sir. So, just the usual technical stuff, folks, just to make sure you can see and hear myself and Dan. Just type yes in the box if Dan and Drew, if you can just say hello. Hi, Hi everyone. Everyone. Hi, Bill. Hi, Rupert. Hi, Lance. Hi, Don. Scott. Matt. Lance again. Um, Michelle. South Africa. Hi, Tom. Awesome. Bill McCabe. The legendary Bill McCabe. Hiya, buddy. Hi, Inez. Hi, Michelle. Awesome. So let's get going. Slightly different this week. We've got a couple of guests as well. Hi, David. Um, so yeah, slightly different this week. We've got Dan, Dan Smith, who's in, uh, who's in Australia. And Dan, one second, sorry about this. Um, Dan's one of our clients who's been with us for about 18 months. Um, so what we're going to do this week is we're going to, we're interviewing Dan. We're going to ask Dan a few questions and you, you know, feel free to ask him any questions. Dan averages... Look, here's what we know. And if I've got any of this wrong, by the way, let me know. For recruitment to search for owners, the more meetings you get with potential hiring managers who are in the market for what you do, the more business you'll get. That's, that's a pretty, pretty, fair, pretty fair, fair summary. So ultimately, if you can just get the meetings with decision makers, you kind of know that you're, you're in with a shout. Drew and I speak to recruitment and search business owners every day of the week for no five five days a week and on average recruitment and search business owners are getting between sort of three and five meetings uh a week with with hiring managers and then they, they and the, but their biggest challenge is they want to grow their business but they, they can't get more meetings and for those that know from the length of time we also know that what we what we advocate is you know when you're going to work with a with a hiring manager work on the retained basis or exclusive with cancellation. Because the average contingent recruiter, when, when you work on contingency, most of the roles you work on, you won't fill. So if you're reaching out then to hiring managers three or five times a week, but most of those roles you're getting are on contingency, you're competing with other recruiters. What it then means is most of the time you're working, you're never gonna get paid. And as I'm sure you agree with the business models, it's probably not, not, a, not a good idea. So that's what the average recruiter does. And what we encourage you to do is look, here's what we say, look, for you to get retained business or exclusively cancellation, you've got to have a relationship with a hiring manager. So the days of calling the hiring manager and saying, hey, my name's Bill, I've been a recruiter for 20 years and I've got a large database and I really care about you. Can I... <laughs> Not a good idea, especially for you guys like uh, Dan and, uh, and Don and, and Mike who work at a big fees of, you know, between sort of 25 and, and 45, 50,000. Calling a complete stranger and asking, to, you know, asking to invest with you is a, is a massive ask, and it's on, it's on a reasonable ask as well. But what we do know is that there are a number of reasons why a hiring manager won't, won't buy from you. They don't have a need for what you do, they don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. So if you can sort of cultivate that relationship, you're in with a shout. So just for the, really for the new guys, so what we encourage you to do is, rather than jumping on the sales call with a hiring manager and saying, hey, I'm a great recruiter, you know, et cetera, one of the things that we encourage is what's called a triage call. So you have a meeting with a hiring manager, which is a 10 minute meeting, just to establish whether this hiring manager and you are a good fit. And if they are, you then book another call, which is a, which is a sales call. So Dan's gonna kind of talk through uh, what he's doing to get between sort of 40 and 50 meetings a month. So I wanna sort of uh, add a few things. Dan's going to share with you what to do at the end of the meeting in our private Facebook group, you'll be able to get access and in the members area, you'll be able to get access to all the templates and all the words and everything that he exactly that, he, that he's using. So we will give you everything at the end of the call, it'll either be in the members area or in, on, in, the, in the private Facebook group. Do there's anything you want to add to that before we kind of get into it? I don't even think Drew's there, so I think he's disappeared. Let me, let me carry on and say, Dan, thank you ever so much, buddy, for joining us today. Just, I just want to let you know, really appreciate this. What time is it for you right now, Dan? Uh, it's just after midnight, five past just 12. Just after midnight. Fine. Yeah. So, yeah, 
massive thank you for 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 being prepared to um, uh, give it your time to, to to share this with us. Before we kind of get into it, Dan, can you just tell us, give us an overview of your business, who you serve? Um, first of all, yeah, the over, uh, overview of business is to who you serve, salary you're recruiting yeah. at, and and then we'll just kind of take it from there. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm I'm an executive recruiter. I work for myself. Um, I focus on Australia and a little bit um, in the, in the last sort of two years since COVID, I guess, a little bit uh, into Asia and so on, but particularly since more people have adopted Zoom and Teams and everything, um, it's made it easier to do business geographically dispersed, I guess. Um, yeah, executive level, typically um, salaries of sort of at least 150, but normally sort of 200,000 and above. Mm-hmm. And all the work you do is retained, that's right? Oh, sorry, yeah, all retained, yeah. Yeah, awesome, great. And how long How long have we been working together? Uh, since the beginning of last year. So uh, what's that? Eight, yeah, six, 16 months. 16 months. And, and today you're going to share with us how you get, you know, 40 to 50 meetings a, a month, every month. But prior to that, on average, how many meetings were you having a month or a week with, interested hiring managers who are in the market for what you do? So in a week, I was, I think on average, it would have been about four or five a week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some weeks would have been good. I might've had seven or eight. Some weeks, particularly if I was running search um, and I was spending more time on the candidates and so on, then, you know, it might only be one or two. Mm. Um, yeah. That yeah, and and then uh, how how would you go about getting the meeting then? Because I think it'd be typical for, for most people, that, you know, in terms of getting a meeting. Yeah, I mean, prior to sort of obviously when we started working together, a lot of it was the same types of people. You know, I would it was people I'd known for a number of years. My at the time I was mostly working um, in Brisbane, in the city I live in. Uh, almost, almost all my business development was done face to face. You know, coffees or lunches or things like that. Um, and typically, it was seeing the same people every sort of, you know, the old cliche of trying to stay front of mind. I would try and see these people every three, four, six months, whatever it might be. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the challenges, obviously, was you know you'd often not speak to them for six months or for three months or whatever it might be you see them for a coffee and they say, oh, it's a shame we didn't catch up two weeks ago. We've just given something to, uh, you know, XYZ company. Um, yeah, so that was one of the things I, I, I found, you know, pretty common. Yeah, no, I think we've all been in that situation. Oh, if only you called me a month ago, a week ago. Um, yeah, so we, we've, we've all been there. Excellent. So... We, we started working, I think it was the, Jan, was it January of, of, of last year? Is that of last right? year, yeah. It That's was, right. it was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and w- one of the things that we, and what we do, for those that don't know, we, we work with the owners and directors of independently owned recruitment search firms. And we, we share with you how to, you know, basically how to have more conversations with interested hiring managers. So, and we share with you how to then to have the right conversation with hiring managers so they want to buy from you more than you want to sell to them. And you know, when I say buy, engage on your on, on, on the retained basis. And we're aware that initially when we share things with people, there is an element of resistance. I think it's fair to say that you had some resistance uh, at, the, at the beginning. So yes. when we shared some of the stuff that we shared with at the beginning, just tell us what your thinking was then and what happened for you to go, you know what, maybe I ought to resist less and do more. Yeah, yeah. Um... So I think uh, from, you know, if, if I remember correctly, a few things. So certainly um, the first time, you know, because there's a bunch of different strategies we talked about in the first sort of, um, in the first three months. And I think almost all of them, I probably thought to myself, even if I maybe didn't say it to you straight away, was that won't work for me. Um or, you know, my market's different or my clients is too senior or whatever it was. Um, deep down, I was thinking to myself, eh, I'm not sure about that. That would yeah. be, yeah. 
Yeah. Just, I just want to quickly go around the room. I'm going to come to you, Drew. What, what, what Dan said there about the reluctance, oh, that won't work for me. Yeah, but my market's different. Just, just type yes in the box if that applies to you as well. If you've had those sort of first concerns right at the very beginning. And while you're doing this, type yes in the box. So if you didn't, no. Uh, yes. <laughs> in there, still do. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Drew, um, can you talk? Are you, are you eating... I mean, wine guns. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So on that, Dan, wasn't there a story? Was it? I don't know if it was you or a different client who, like, you shared. You, you watched a video of one of my strategies. You shared it with a colleague or a friend. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> different industry. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was the it was the email campaign off get prospect. Uh, I gave it to a friend of mine who's not in recruitment. Who's a, who is in sales in a different industry. And I said, oh, you should try this. Um, actually, it wasn't even Get Prospect. It was sort of the, the nine word email to like uh, old yeah. contacts who you haven't spoken to for, you know, maybe years or months or whatever it might be. Just to just check, have, have you tried it at this point when you told him to try it or was you just no. going to be? Gonna be? <laughs> no. Uh, I if it fails, it's on him and you're just going to sit back and well, be like, I, I think I, no, that's not true because I, I must have told him, I think I tried a small selection, like, a, you know, I tried it on 20 people, whereas I could have tried it on a thousand people, right? Um, and then I, I told him about it. I was having coffee with him one day and I said, oh, I told him about it. And he, he called me the next day and said, oh, I, I booked five meetings off it, whatever it was. And I said, oh, how many people did you send it to? And he said, oh, nine. And I said, oh, I meant to send it to like 500 or 1,000 or something. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll do that today. <laughs> so I told him what I should have done as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Funny, I don't know. Kathy, if Kathy's here, look, just for those that don't know, nine-word emails where you send out a very short email. And by the way, you can do this to a cold list. So if Kathy's here to share with you, he picked up £100,000 uh, worth of business about a month ago, just send a nine-word email. Again, if you want the template email and everything it's, and, and how to do that, that's, that's all in, in the members area. So and look, and a lot of people have said the very much the same thing about the, the that you said there about the, yeah, but my market's different. Um, in fact, nobody's, <laughs> in essence, yes, yeah, sometimes I still do. You know, Rupert, all the time. Um, <laughs> so all joking apart, that's, that's quite understandable as well um that, that's quite understandable um so what was a breakthrough for you where you go actually enough already perhaps i ought to so um i, I mean i i implemented everything at the start but it, some of it took longer than others um specifically with linkedin i did do that from the start although it was a different messaging sequence that we were using at the time um and then, you know, I'd probably done it for, I think it was about six weeks. And I'd had, I'd had a, you know, I'd booked a, a few meetings here and there. It certainly wasn't, um, it certainly wasn't much more than what I'd already been doing previously. Uh, and then Mike and I spoke in May last year. Um, he gave me a template for, for something he'd been trying. And at the time he was doing, I think 25 messages a day he was booking. So what's that? 125 a week. I think he was booking about 10 appointments a week. Uh, so I just copied it and I, I started in May last year. Um, over the first month or so I copied Mike, I did 25 a day. I wasn't getting as good a response rate. So um, I upped it to 35 and then I upped it to 40 and then I upped it to 50. And ever since then I've been doing, um, yeah, 50 messages a day, every weekday, well, every, yeah, right. every working day. Excellent. So just, I'm, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. I just want to check in with you, Dan. How, can you remember how we interacted, how we very first, mm -hmm. yeah? Can you, can you? Uh, yeah, uh, on um, Facebook, Facebook chat. On Facebook. So just for those, that, what Dan's talking about, so we, we call it social media chat. So you can do it on Facebook, or you can do it on LinkedIn. Most recruiters that I know that we work with, 
very rarely, if ever, use Facebook to do this. And again, most of your prospects, if you find this hard to believe, are on Facebook rather than on LinkedIn. That's a fact. I think it's 26% of the workforce are on LinkedIn. Um, if you go and check the numbers and the amount of users on, on Facebook. So this method works on both Facebook and LinkedIn. But what most recruiters do on LinkedIn, they're connected to, let's say, a CEO of an XYZ uh, company, and they reach out to the CEO on LinkedIn saying, hey, my name's Fred, I'm a great recruiter. Can, or let me, or here's a typical one. Can I introduce myself and my business? I've been in business for 10 years. We do this, blah, 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 blah. That's a typical message that uh, a recruiter sends out to, a, to a, a decision maker on LinkedIn. And I'm sure you appreciate the response isn't, isn't too good. So with that in mind, talk us through your, because you only use, you don't use Facebook, do you, Dan? Or do you? No. No, no. right. Um, talk us through, before I do that, so I just want to come to Drew. Is there anything you want to add to what I've just said there, Drew? And I'm just going to get you to talk through your process, please, uh, Dan. And then we're, we're going to take a few questions. Yeah, I think I'm just thinking back to, because we, this strategy we first sort of introduced during lockdown. That's right. Yeah, good point. I think, you know, what, you know obviously, you know, like, like most recruiters, most of our clients are using the phones to win business. But then obviously, yeah, all of a sudden, no one was in the office. So like, we had to find, think of a strategy to get meetings without being able to use the phone. And I think I think if you listen to this now and you're, you're still using the phone, like, again, I'm not saying to stop that, but adding this to your process, like what Dan's doing or what, what the few other people doing as well, um, can drastically increase the number of opportunities you're creating each month. Um, and obviously more opportunities equal more sales, which equal more revenue and profit. Mm. That's a really good point you made there. Dan's getting these meetings, by the way, 40 to 50, without picking up the phone. And it is just one strategy. And Dan, as mo I think everybody here, actually, I think Mike might be doing a bit of Facebook. M most people here are not using any other platform other than LinkedIn, because and I'll say this with love to all recruiters, but recruiters think that everybody lives on LinkedIn, because if recruiters are on there all day, I think everybody else is, but I promise you that uh, they're not. So, so, so talk us through the process that you... Sorry, Terry, can I just cut in? Yeah. Because yeah. I think we've had a few of these sessions where people talk about the messaging, the messaging, you know, what they're sending out, which I think is important, but can, can we sort of dig a bit more into what you're doing on the platform outside of the messaging? Because I think that... Was, I was yeah, going to yeah. do that, actually, but go on, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect, sorry. Um, so yeah, yeah, I have... So, yeah, I tell you what. I talked earlier about a client won't engage you unless they have a need, they know you, like you, and trust you. So simply sending a message saying, I'm a great recruiter to a complete stranger, it's kind of pushing water up a hill. So there's a lot of things that you have to do in the background. So when you reach out to a decision maker, ideally you want them to go, yeah, I know who you are. Yeah, so just want to add that to the other activity you do other than yeah. the chat to get people to engage, please. Uh, Dan. Just... Um... Maybe, maybe starting off, it, it's it, it's only a catalyst for getting the conversations. I think that's a really important, yeah, um, you know, thing to point out. I always remember early in my career, my first boss saying to me, "You know, I made a comment. Oh, the, the candidate's resume isn't, you know, so and so. The resume is not." And he said to me, the "Resume doesn't matter. The resume is only the only purpose of it is to get an interview. So that that's where the magic happens." Is is when the candidate meets the client. And I think the same thing is about this, right? Like regardless of the messaging, whether it's email campaigns or LinkedIn or 10 before 10 or whatever it is, none of it matters in terms of the content. It's simply a method to get them on, on a call or, you know, face-to-face mm. -face meeting, whatever it might be. Um, and, and the more of those you do, obviously the more opportunities you uncover. You're not going to win them all, but the more business you win. Um, Sorry, I just thought I'd add that. So, yeah, um, the I, I guess uh, I guess starting at the beginning. So I post on LinkedIn three times a week. Um, you know, I pick content that's as I say, my market is is executive level. So you know, CEO, chief people officers are are the typical. Um, uh, clients that that engage with me occasionally it might be a COO or CFO etc um, so I post content around some of my content is is recruitment focused you know around the difficulty of attracting top talent or things like that sometimes it's pure just leadership content you know that's 
people at that level, that's kind of what they would find interesting. Um, so I post on LinkedIn three times a week. Uh, I put up a poll once a week on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I do run email campaigns as well, but that's kind of uh, a, a bit of a secondary thing for me. It's it's I've got a smaller list, etc. Uh, email list. That yeah, I'm, just on that, how many how many t- times do you email in your list in a week? Uh, only once a week. Once a week, yeah. Yeah. But I have far more people on LinkedIn than I do on my email list. Um, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of specifically with, so I know, I think it was about this time last year, LinkedIn implemented the cap on sending 100 connection requests a week. Um, I don't know if anyone else is finding this, but I've found in the last three weeks that that seems to have lifted. Um, I've sent sort of 120, 130, 140 connections the last two or three weeks and never got any of those messages around you're getting close to your limit or you've reached your limit for the week, et cetera. Um, anyway, that's just a, a side note that, that people might find valuable. Um, so new connection. So, so when someone accepts, uh, they'll get a message saying, you know, thanks for connecting. Um, there's nothing around, there's literally no information. It's just literally a thank you message. Um, so just just you, to stop there, because yeah. that in itself is unusual because most people connect and then that's it. Or it's a pitch what, straight away. Or a pitch, I was about to say, yeah. But yeah. what you're saying is you connect and you're just saying, thanks, just thanks for connecting. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me if you had this. Some people come back to you and said, and said, oh, that's unusual. Have you had any, uh, any response? Yeah, no, because LinkedIn, uh, I, I do get the odd response. Um, LinkedIn's got those, like the automated responses you can just click on. That's and it's right, yeah. kind of key phrases and stuff. So often it'll just be like, a, thanks, Dan, will do, or something like that. Yeah, you know, they've just clicked an automatic response. Not, not yeah. you know, that might be one in one in 30 that replies to that message. Yeah. You know, I'm not asking a question. I'm not saying it's just literally thanks for connecting. Let me know yeah. if I can help with anything. Yeah, um, awesome. So just, then, just on that, can you see if you're competing with Dan and he's saying thanks for connecting, how straight away he's standing up from the crowd because you as a recruitment business owner, you one of your key roles is to position yourself as the authority, the go-to recruiter. So rather than saying I'm a recruiter and can I have your business, he's just saying thank you. Most of your competitors are now pitching for the business. Yeah. Yeah. Back, back to you, Dan. Dan yeah. Um, so then uh, it's, it's about five days after the thank you message. I'll send another message with a, um, offering an ebook, which I've put, which I wrote. Um, What's your ebook again, called? Uh, it's around, so it's the 12 steps for attracting the top executive talent. I think is, is the title or yeah. top 1% of top 1% of executive talent. Yeah. Um, again, it's not, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just saying if I put this free ebook together, if you want a copy, let me know. Um, again, it's my response rate's pretty low off that, but you know, I think a big part of it is again, they're not getting pitched to, you know, in the first, week that they're they've connected to me um do we say just on that down when you say low what's what's what sort of percentage is low uh, i've probably had about a hundred people ask for the ebook in the last sort of 12 months out of right i've probably sent it to six thousand maybe right yeah five thousand oh, yeah. six thousand something like that so mm-hmm. pretty low but mm. again it's not um uh it's funny i i'm now using that a bit later on in the sales process as well when i book a sales meeting um you know and i'm sending the invite and i'm just attaching that saying hey listen if, if you find this useful or if you want to share it with your team or whatever it might be just to kind of help add to that the authority piece before mm-hmm. i'm going into that um that sales call um and then, and then after the ebook offer, um, about a week after that, 
I'll send the first message asking for a, um, a quick 10 minute call. Um, mm. So again, response rate to that one is pretty low. Um, but then they sort of, it, then it's a cadence of about every six weeks. Uh, I'll just change the messaging. It, it'll be similar in terms of it still asks for a 10 minute, 15 minute call. Um, but I'll change it to be kind of suited to that time of the year. So for example, you know, if it's just before Christmas, you can start sending them saying, Hey, listen, love to catch up in early January and find out what's on the horizon for the new year or at the end of financial year, there's another excuse or beginning of the next quarter. So you, you just pick the time. I just pick the time of the year and I frame my message somewhere, something to do with something that's topical, new financial year, new calendar year, new quarter, whatever it might be. Um, and, and it's, you know, those messages I can share my screen if that. Yeah, just, just before we do, uh, yeah. I'm just going to go around the room and I'm go to Drew. Just want to, yeah, just want to get some thoughts or feedback. So I'm just come to a few people. I'm come to you, Don, uh, then Tom, Inez, and Scott. Just for your thoughts, feedback, and observations, please. Don, yeah, first of all, I think it's been real helpful so far, Terry and Dan. Thank you for doing this today. I've got a number of questions. I'll wait uh, until maybe they're they're either answered or we'll posit them al along the way. But I think it's been very useful so far. Excellent. Thanks, Don. Don. Tom. Thoughts, feedback, observations? Yeah, same. Um, yeah, really insightful. I, I, yeah, I think I think it's important what you're saying in terms of warming, warming people up as well, just in terms of that constant posting on LinkedIn as well. So, yeah, I guess if you're messaging someone three or five days after, then a week later, then six weeks later, you've probably posted three times a week for that six weeks as well. So they've seen your content and then it's yeah, a bit yeah. more warm going back to them. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, and and point, yeah. again, not everyone says this, but the amount of times in the last 12 months I've got on a call for the first time, never spoken to them. And the first thing they say is something like, oh, you're the most active guy on LinkedIn or I see your stuff on LinkedIn all the time or whatever it might be. Um, and that's literally the first thing they say on, on a call. You know, it's uh, a bit of a bit of rapport, a bit of chemistry already because they've been seeing the content for, you know, however long we've been connected. Mm. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Inez? Hi, everyone. And hi, Dan. Thanks for hi, doing Inez. this in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. yeah, I think we've been, I mean, we've been in, uh, in this group for a similar time, for us a little bit shorter, but I think what Dan's been doing is, is quite consistent and in big volumes. So I think that's the key to everything. But it needs a bit yeah. of discipline, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, you know, I can, I can, speak quickly to that but you know i put it in my calendar every day it's it doesn't take long it takes me half an hour a day it used to take a bit longer but as you as you as you do it more it you know you refine the process it takes me about half an hour a day to send the you know 50 messages a couple of days a week i do the other things like the ebook offers or the on top of it but again that's only an extra 10 or 15 minutes so you know three days a week it takes me half an hour maybe the other two days a week, it takes me 45 minutes. Um, and that, yeah, generates double the appointments that I've ever generated. You know, I, last month I booked, in March, I booked 48 meetings and that's, yeah, that's the most I've ever booked in a month. Um, a lot. <laughs> the first week, I booked 15 in the first week and a half of this month. Um yeah, it's only been what eight days, nine days, whatever it's. Yeah, I'm just let's go over to a, a couple of questions coming. I'll come to your questions in a moment. Just, just going to go to Scott, and I'll come to some of the questions that have been typed in here. So, Scott, yeah, just your thoughts, feedback. Uh, Scott, oh, there you go. I've just unmuted it. No, Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't find my <laughs> mouse. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Dan. It's great. I mean, fantastic. I'd love to have a look at your um, planner, your your calendar in terms of the way that that you set that out and you know, how, how your weekly the week set up. It's fantastic. I mean, I'm in the process of you know doing that now, and but it's it's changing. Um, but yeah, it sounds fantastic. I'm really taking great notes here and listening yeah. intently. Th thanks very much. It's brilliant. This. Thank you. It's all right. I'll show you in a second when we do that. When I show you the um, template yeah. and so on. And and. 
I think what's interesting there, 30 minutes a day gets you to, on average, two, two appointments a day. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, that, Dan. Over to you, Drew. So, yeah, Dan, I just wanted to um, ask a few questions about, um, I guess, the sales process off, off the back of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, you're, uh, well, am I right in understanding that these aren't, um, you know, hour long sales meetings that you're booking? These are 10 no. minute, almost introductory yeah. calls with, uh, you know, see, you know, target your target audience basically correct right. yeah and then yeah. so you're you're effectively using it you know what we call a triage call where you're using that to you know get to know the prospect qualify mm -hmm. them see where the needs are and then you're booking a sales call later down the line if they qualify if they're yeah. right so i guess can, can we and again last last question but can we get sort of a, an idea of the the workflow in terms of your numbers so okay if you yeah. get 40 appointments a month how many of those then convert into a, a sales opportunity yeah what, and then what time frame and then how many of those are you you know once you get on the, on the, on the you yeah. Know, meeting, yeah yeah you run into a client so, and all that sort of stuff. so my ratios have been about a th about a third of my triage calls um they are you know the client and i the conversation is good either the timing's not right um, they don't have an immediate need, but maybe they're doing a bit of research ahead of some plan changes down the, down the line. Um, but, but the conversation goes well where we think, you know what, there's, an, there's potentially an opportunity to work together in the future. So I book another triage call then, and it could be that it's in three months time or eight weeks time or whatever it is that when they say, hey, listen, it's not immediate, but I'm just starting to, I, I did one today. Right? I spoke to a CEO I haven't spoken to five years maybe he wasn't a ceo he was like the next level down and he's just got his first ceo role i reached out to him a few weeks ago and i said congrats on the new role i didn't ask him for a meeting then i just said congrats on the new role hope you're enjoying it so far i waited a few weeks and then i sent him a message tuesday i think and he oh sorry monday he replied saying hey listen i've got some time on thursday afternoon if you um want to chat i spoke to him today and he said hey listen it's really early days i'm only seven weeks into the job um, and I've got a board strategy session uh, with the board next month to redefine the strategy, look at capability, et cetera. So I'll know more about, you know, if we're going to have to replace any of my team, et cetera, et cetera, then. So sometimes they're doing that sort of initial scoping work before they are ready. Um, in which case we're obviously, you know, I'm booking something else, but it's already in my diary, right? Like, and his diary. So I now don't have to go back and, doesn't require any more work in between it's it's you know we've got a call scheduled for early june after his board meeting that's done yeah. um so yeah so about a third we book into a future triage call um about five percent go into sales call um so so when the you rest at the sales call you mean five percent of that 13 or five percent of the 14? sorry sorry five percent of the of the total amount Right. In in and we say five percent. So they go into a sales call you mean in that month, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Are you saying like you know, forty they say you forty calls, thirteen go to yep. a, 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 a you know, another triage call later on in line. Correct. Yep. Got another another five percent that go to a sales call as in there and then so you know, two go to a sales call. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess what what yeah, what what, what the rest of them is looking like. And then the rest are a combination of either I don't think it's the right fit or they don't turn out to be the right person or, um, you know, you know, whatever it might be. Um, or, you know, all they want to do is talk about fees, you know, they're a price buyer, yeah. whatever it might be. Um, so it's not that I don't, I put those to the back burner, you know, they go into an email campaign. They're obviously still on LinkedIn. So they still see my content, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it's not an immediate. Um, yeah. Or and or the relationship needs more work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. So I I guess that's a good. Um, you know, I use it very much as a, in, in terms of the triage call, I use it very much as a. Um, you know, I'm happy to do. As many as you know, they're only ten minute calls, right? So I, I'm happy to do far more of them and less 
sales calls, um, and but I qualify people out a bit. So I think my five percent kind of conversion rate from triage call to sales call is lower than some people, but I win. Last year, I won ninety percent of the, the sales calls that I that I did. Um, you know, I won ninety percent of the proposals. You're like sort of qualifying them hard in that, you know, that, ten, that first 10 minute call, 15 minute call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they're not a right fit, you're either, you know, moving them on to later on down the line, or you're saying, look, go back into that sequence. I'll educate you into yep. the client. Yeah. And when you do get them on a the sales call, you get nine times of the time you're, you, you know, you're, you're securing the, 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 the business. Yeah. Um, so and, when, uh, pardon? I was going to say, what did you say your average fee was? Um, over the last year, it was thirty-two thousand. I think was the average fee. Awesome. So, uh, uh, sorry, to, I know you're about to say something. So I'll come back to that in a second. So, I guess what I'm trying to get a picture of is so you know every month forty bookings, forty triage calls mm-hmm. booked, thirteen go to a, into a future. You know another, another month, two sales calls there and then. Um, now you've got this pipeline. How many of that? Those thirteen. You know, you know I guess how many sales calls did you have last month, for example? Yeah. Um, so I didn't, yeah, last month was a bit quieter only because I've had that time off the month off yeah. previous. Um, so, but I got back into the flow of it, obviously, when I got back from overseas and hence this month is really busy. You know, I've got, I said to Terry last night, like I, it's early days, but I, I, I'm confident I'm going to have my best quarter this quarter. And I, it's only, 10, you know, what, 12, 15 days into it. So, um, and that's without winning anything new yet. It's just that I know that I look at my calendar and I'm like, well, um, you know, I've got 10 meetings a week for the next however many weeks. Um, and I feel like I, I've said this to Terry in the last couple of weeks that for the first time, the last month or so, I feel like it's on autopilot. Like, even say six months ago when I was consistently booking sort of seven or eight meetings a week, um, I still felt like I'd wake up and the, the, the tap would get turned off. Yeah. Whereas now I wake up every day and I'm like, I just do the chat and I get meetings every day. Yeah. I think, you know, one thing that's coming out of this for me, and you know, me and Terry spoke about this before is that I think that, the, like for, for any recruitment business, any recruiter, it's good to have a daily client acquisition machine where you're consistently generating opportunities, you know, you know, obviously because you know more opportunities, more sales. But I think what's coming out for me in just the way you're communicating is the confidence it gives you. Where you know you can look at your calendar and know, okay, I've got I've got 10 sales meetings next month or whatever, whatever the number is, and my close rate's this. I know there's, you know, I know there's revenue there, and I'm not gonna have my best quarter. I yeah. think that's that's sort of the hidden benefit that people don't often think about, I guess, is the confidence it gives you to, you know, predict your quarter, but also like, you know, I think when you enter a sales call, knowing that you've got two, three, four, five opportunities in that week, it's easier to stick to you the fee you want. It's easier to stick to the terms you want. It's easier to come across confident. I think that's what's coming across for me. Yeah. Uh, in the way you communicate it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's, yeah, and and even again, I I, I do it. I guess I've adapted some part of the process slightly differently to most. Where um, if it's too big a gap between when they're ready and or when the timing is right, you know, I'll book a second triage call as opposed to say doing the triage call today and booking a sales call in, in three months' time or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll book another triage call, and that gives me the opportunity to you know, qualify them in or out for their, you know, again, the timing may be not right again or something may have changed rather than me waste time. Um, you know, it's easier for me to do a 10 or 15 minute call than it is to do an hour call, write a proposal, all that sort of stuff. And then find out that it's not, it wasn't a real opportunity or they've given it to someone else or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm spending more time up front 
on the triage process, doing more triage for the structure, but then less time down the track. But as I say, I win uh, in the last 12 months, I've won 90% of my, um, uh, the, of this, from the sales calls, obviously I'll put in a proposal and I've won 90% of those. So there's a question here from Don is, uh, so I know. yeah, sorry, do you, uh, do you find that you ever compete against other firms or are you weeding this out in the trash book? Sometimes. Um, it, it's, it's probably 50, 50. Um, but I also think part of the process of the triage calls and particularly if there's been multiple, you know, if, if there's been one now, one in three months, et cetera, until they're ready, is um, the relationship is so good that they're not sort of the only reason to go out to multiple. Let's be honest. The only reason to go out for multiple proposals is if you compare com comparing prices. Like yeah. if you're making your decision. If you're making a decision on the process about what people write in a proposal, I mean, anyone could write anything, right? You can pay a tender company to write. Yeah. Okay. You can pay a copywriter or whatever to write that sort of stuff. So someone with no recruitment experience could write a better tender than I do or better proposal. Um, but obviously the relationship, you know, the content, the emails they get in between, et cetera. Um, that's part of my qualification process. Yeah. And, and relationship building process as well. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks for that. I'm just going to go around the room. I'm going to go to Lisa. Lisa, you have to type the question in the chat box. So, yeah, Lisa, open your mic and ask, ask the way. Then I'm going to go to David Van Santen in, in, Hol uh, in Holland and Lance in the States. So Lisa, first of all. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. Hi, Lisa. Yeah. Hey, I just wondered if all of your messaging is through LinkedIn or do you try to take them off of LinkedIn <laughs> on, into email? Uh, eventually I do. Um, the initial messages are off LinkedIn and then um, so two things. One is if they obviously, for those people who have requested an ebook, I get their email through that to send them the ebook. And then I've got their email obviously after that. Um, but also people who, you know, sometimes you obviously do triage calls and, and nothing comes of it. And then they obviously go into an email campaign after that. So, so that they're still seeing my name, my content, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point there. A couple of things. Um, just to clarify, Dan, for, the, for, the, you know, for everybody else, you, everything you do, you do manually as well, don't you? You don't mm -hmm. automate. You don't, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's worth noting. I think the question you've asked there, Lisa, is a great question. I think that we encourage is that you, the problem with LinkedIn, it's a great tool, but if LinkedIn were able to slap your legs and say, right, you're, you know, and they kick off LinkedIn, you're kind of stuffed, so to speak. So whenever you can, you want to take as much of the data that you've got on LinkedIn off onto a platform that you own, because of course with LinkedIn, it's not a platform that, that we own and they can kick it off whenever they want. So I think that was a great question, Lisa, thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me go to David, sorry. Oh, I was just saying thank you. Ah, That's okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David in Holland. Yes. Hi. Good, uh, hi, good David. afternoon, everyone here from Holland. Um, so what I was wondering is how you keep track of everyone, you know, like the 25 people you sent out, like, how do you know if it's six, six weeks has passed? Are you using like a CRM or, or some, some other um, method? So, uh, so two parts. So I track the metrics just in a, in a spreadsheet. Um, you know, if I'm sending 50 messages today and then, um, or connection requests when people accept, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the replies, the number of replies I get to messages and then obviously the, the amount of appointments I book. Um, in terms of tracking, it doesn't have to be exactly six weeks. Like what I typically do is split, as I said before, there's two typical job titles. It's CEOs or whatever the senior most HR role is in the you know, chief people officer, HR director, et cetera. Um, so then I'll just, I'll do a LinkedIn search uh, by one of those job titles, let's say CEO, 
um, I'll pick a city in Australia, do the search. It might come up with, um, you know, 600 people that I'm connected to. Uh, you know, there's what 12 days of messaging at 50 a day. And then I'll do the same job title, but another city. Um, once I get through that cycle, uh, I'll change it from CEO to HR director or chief people officer, or whatever it is. Um, and I know that I've got about three, th at the moment, I've got about 3,000. Um, I've got more connections, but I've got about 3,000 who are prospects. So based off um, 250 a week, that's around about 12 weeks. Mm. Uh, just a quick question for you. I, I, no doubt you remember Jeremy in Texas, and he used to use chat, and he was sending messages to people that he wasn't connected to via the groups. Is that something that you do, Dan? I've, done, I've tried it. Um, I didn't get a great response rate from it. Um, I got a few. Uh, I probably did it in, I think it was November last year. I did it for, for a good solid month. Um, on top of, I did it on top of what I was already doing, given success I was already having. Um, I didn't get as great a response rate, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't try too many different types of messages. Right. Um, I, I, Drew, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think Jeremy's message is quite, I say, blunt. <laughs> Kind of you knew where you stood with him. It was uh, what do we need to do to to, to, to yeah. have a conversation? Um, yeah. Um, but I think he was getting about thirty meetings a month, wasn't he? Uh, just yeah. just asking that for people that he had no relationship. So you don't. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for that, Dan. Lance. Yeah, Terry. Terry, I think he. Uh, I think he kind of answered uh, some of the stuff. I was curious about you know automation. Okay. Uh, but but also, um, I'm curious, uh, Dan, do you have any other supports like admin support, like a VA or a sales setter, or are you pretty much a one man band doing everything on your own? At the moment, it's just me. Um, but I've sort of got to that point over the last few months where it's funny, actually, I remember the week before Christmas, Terry and I spoke about that that was kind of a goal for me for this year was getting to the point where I could start to look at, you know, VA, you know, potentially outsourcing some of the candidate research, all that sort of stuff, um, which would then allow me to kind of double down on the amount of meetings I'm doing, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, funnily enough, it's a good question because I've I've just been kind of um, uh, I've spoken to a couple of companies that do VAs in the last couple of weeks. Um, I've just been doing a bit of research last week actually around some potential. Um, candidate you know research researchers and things like that that would do like freelance um because i i wouldn't at the moment my operating model would be not to bring people on as employees that would have right kind of yeah. free, freelance help yeah all right great thank you that's okay Excellent. thanks for that i'm just gonna yeah just a couple of things that I, because Andrew said about um confidence and you know and we've joked about it on here numerous of times about what we call the commission breath where you're speaking to that hiring manager and you're absolutely desperate for that business and they can they can smell that desperation from 50 paces and and part of that the, what's causing that problem is the fact that you're kind of thinking hell if i don't get this deal over the line i've, I've got nothing else but if you're getting you know 30 50 appointments a month every month it completely eliminates that um, and Again, I, I don't know you won't mind me sharing, Dan. One of the things that we, talk, we talked about, Dan, with his, with his triage course, his, his conversion rate, and Michelle's the same, their conversion rate from, from, from sales meeting to you know, getting a deal over the line is really high. But they're pretty strict about who they do business with, and they're pretty strict about who gets into the, into the sales funnel, so to speak. And it, it, and it may well be that if they were to perhaps less strict and actually say, actually, do you know what? I I'll I'll, won't be strict in the triage call and, and I'll take more sales meeting. It may well be that it goes more, but I know Michelle's uh, conversion rate is extremely high as well. But it's, in the, I suppose you need, you need to look and go, well, if it's working for you, great. But it, but it may well be that you could, you could get take in more sales calls, have a lower conversion rate, but ultimately, uh, in, increase your sales and I think it was, I would encourage you to, to at the very least uh, uh, just just test it but some of the stuff you shared there Dan fantastic I want to come to Dan Don again because he said I had some questions then I'm going to come to Michelle 
in South Africa than Michelle in the UK. Yeah, Dan, this is great. Really appreciate your, uh, again, you're doing this. Um, you know, my system's a little different in that we, we automate a lot and uh, outsource quite a bit of, uh, of work. But I am curious, um, I, and I get this, uh, especially through some of the group uh, invitations that I've done, um, probably more prolific in that capacity. But um, do you get, like, is there a percentage that you get uh, that are people, I guess, that are actually seeking work? So you're kind of putting it out there and wanting to have a conversation. You find on the call that, uh, in fact, that person may be looking to switch roles themselves. And then I guess the, the other end of that question is, you know, out of the 10 meetings or whatever it is you do on a weekly basis, how many do you find maybe seeking work, if any, uh, how many are uh, seeking your services now versus uh, it's really more of a nurture campaign? I think that question was mentioned earlier in the, in the chat yeah. and sorry if I missed that, but I'm just kind of curious right. as to if, if you have 10 calls, where does that spectrum tend to? Tend to so I would say it's probably only one in, let's say it's 10 a week. It's probably one every second week. So one in 20 that ends up being a candidate. And they've been, I would say they're typically, given the wording of the messages I use, I think they're typically pretty coy about it. Like they're trying to have a conversation with you because they want to leave where they are or whatever it is, right? They're unhappy. Um, but they think that maybe you wouldn't take the call if they just said, hey, listen, I'm looking for a job. Um, so some of them are pretty coy about it, right? But it's, again, it's probably one in 20. Um, because of the wording I use, most of them know what the conversation is going to be about. Um, there's very few who, yeah, it's, I would say it's very few. Um, but I do think as well, given the level, so your, your second question around how many of them are now versus, I do think at the level I work at, they're a lot more strategic. You know, there's a lot more, unless someone resigns or unless it's out of the blue, it, there's a lot more thinking ahead of like, well, we're planning this restructure or, you know, M&A activity or whatever it might be that creates change at that senior level. Um, I think I shared with it actually before Christmas that I booked a call in December for next October. So this October, so 10 months out because the, the chief people officer said, Hey, listen, we've got a, a major transformation program kicking off in July. The likelihood is from that, that a few months in, we will realize that we don't have the right people on the bus. Can we talk in October? I was like, sure. So we booked a call 10 months out. Um, and that's how far ahead that they were planning, right? And that's not always the case, but um, I would say it's more typical, more like the conversation I shared about the, the one that I had today with the CEO where, you know, he's just started seven weeks ago. The message was um, probably good timing. He's starting to think about, what he's seen so far from his leadership team and so on um, and, and probably the next level below that. And, um, but they've got a board, uh, he's got a session with the board next month around, you know, pivoting the strategy and also talking about capability and so on and whether they need to make any changes. So, um, you know, we had a, we had a brief conversation today and I said, listen, I understand timing's not right when's your board meeting? And he said, look, end of May, can we talk first week of, uh, first week of June? I said, sure. Um, and funnily enough, I actually spoke to someone last week who, um, this guy's financial services CEO. And I said to him, listen, I've got someone who, um, but I was really, I was really um, cautious to say, hey, listen, I realize the timing's not right. So I almost pulled it away from him a bit. And I said, you know, I've got this guy who's got this background. If you, once you go through your analysis, if you decide that, um, you know, someone like that with that background might be worth a conversation, I think that would also be worth us talking about. 
And he said, oh, actually, that's something my, my early observation is maybe we have a gap in that. So let me, let me put some thought into it and we'll regroup that conversation in June as well. Um, so now I have two things to, you know, to talk about with him that, and I've kind of used a bit of a, a bit of a lure, I guess, to kind of um, get him thinking about what sort of talents out there and who they might be able to attract, et cetera. That's awesome, Dan. One other, other quick follow-up question on the original one, you've got a significant duration or gap if you book a call in December going through to the following October. So maybe um, what do you do in the interim between those two endpoints to help nurture, I guess, that relationship? Yeah. So obviously I would have, uh, at that stage, I would have their email because, um, you know, I'd be sending them a calendar invite for the meeting. So they'll go into my email campaign, which at the moment has been once a week, but my plan is to sort of up that. Obviously as well, they would be seeing my posts on LinkedIn all the time, given that I'm posting three times a week plus the poll. Um, and, and then actually that's um, in addition to the normal posts, assuming it's not completely confidential, I'll also put up a post with any new, so, you know, even if it's really generic, just like I'm running a search for a CEO in banking. If anyone's got any referrals, let me know type thing. But it just, you know, I'm not expecting great candidates to come out of that. I'm just, it's just a way to kind of show people the level I'm, I'm operating at. And again, hopefully be a bit of a, um, uh, a bit of a tick in someone's mind of, oh, that's right, that guy, that's what that guy does. Again, right time, right place type thing. Thank you. No worries. Excellent. Um, just, just going to go back. To, I'm going to go come to you in a moment, uh, Michelle, in South Africa. But just as you said there, could you know what you know now, the part that you outsource, could it be the very first stage when you when you're starting the chat on on let's say you use LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that the bit that you would you would look to outsource, yeah. and then you take over for those that engage? Yeah. Um, yeah, particularly the the first, you know, the the thank you message and the ebook offer and so on. That that would be um, the two obvious steps to to outsource. Um, yeah, and for me as well, I think um, one of I said to you, Terry, that I think the other thing for me is uh, around the candidate research and interviewing and so on, writing up, yeah, candidate yeah. reports, all that sort of stuff. I, I think that's. Um, you know, ultimately, if I can focus all my time on just talking to, to clients or prospective clients, then, um, yeah, the, the better the business will be and, and set me up for long-term success as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. Michelle in South Africa and then Michelle in UK. Hi, all. Hi, Dan. Uh, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, we we uh, we're quite active on the chat as well, and and I'd, I'd had a, had a question about that uh, because uh, the the chats itself. Uh, you, you said half an hour a day. I think for us it would be similar. Um, and, and my first question would be: um, Do you do the chats mostly with people who accept your invite, or is it existing uh, uh, um, connections already? <coughs> Uh, and the second is we, we notice uh, that um, uh, actually a lot of time for us is is finding new CEOs, general managers, and uh, people to invite. Basically, that 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 is more time consuming for us uh, than uh, uh, the actual chat. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you experience that? Do you do you how do you find new people to invite? Basically, yeah, yeah. So I do it the same thing, kind of the same. Um the same method that I use for messaging, which is because LinkedIn, you know, doesn't have the same capability as a CRM, et cetera. Um, but it does have a lot of the sub search categories and things like that. So I'll just pick a city and a job title. So you can do the same with adding new connections, right? So instead of picking first connections, I'll just pick second connections and then the job title and the city. And it might come up with, you know, 400 people I'm not connected to who are, CEOs in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever it might be. Um, given that I'm 
well, up until a few weeks ago, my, my goal was to add, send out 20 a day, obviously, because you're capped at 100. So, you know, I just go through the first two pages. There's 10 on each page. I just go and just, it literally takes 20 seconds. You know, I don't, I don't, I know some people do. I don't put a message on the connection request. I just hit connect. I found that I didn't really, I've tried both. It, I didn't really get much of a difference between the response rates. So it's easier for so me to So what percentage just, response rate are you getting, uh, Dan? Uh, I'm getting about 30% acceptance. Which is the norm. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay. Yeah, clear. Cool. And and in terms of um, uh, your chats, do you mostly do it with the new connections or with people that are Both. already existing? Both. Okay. So I would say that, um, well, I do know actually. So since kind of beginning of last year when I joined the program, uh, I've added about 1,700 new connections as in people who have accepted. Um, and I probably had about, 13 or 1400 who were, pro I had more than that connections, but in terms that were prospects. So yeah. I've now got about 3000. So, but it's both, you know, in terms of the cadence of, of messaging and so on, it's both to those people who I might've been connected to for five years, as well as the ones who have, I've connected with sometime in the last, you know, 16 months or whatever it might be. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle in the UK. Hello. Hi, Hi Michelle. Michelle. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Dan. Um, I know it's very early. I'm sure, I hope you get a glass of Rioja before you go to bed. Um, so thanks for sharing again. So it's really interesting because we need to do more work on our messaging because we're sending lots of them. But I think what we've done is we're sending too many um, uh too much sort of client magnets, too much sort of value based and not enough questions. So if we sort of look at Dan's sending, you know, every six weeks or so, uh, you know, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. And especially when he talks about that situation when, you know, how often you miss the cycle. So if a, if a typical CEO or C-suite has three or four hires a year, you know, that is one a quarter. So if you're not speaking to them every six weeks, you, you're going to miss that cycle at some point in those, in that sort of lifetime. And I think, you know, for yeah. us, we've got messaging set up, you know, that's going, you know, maybe once a month, but it's like, even if it's once one value, one question, we're missing too many questions, you know, for the call really. So I think, we're not getting the level of um, meetings that Dan is getting, and it's certainly something we need to improve on. So we're going to switch out the value-based um, messaging and move more to, you know, when can we talk, really? It's, um, uh, I guess from your experience, Michelle, it's a good observation in terms of something I've found as well is that my response rate has gone up over time. Mm. So I didn't say this before, but... <laughs> A lot of people, it's taken them, you know, the thank you message, the ebook offer, and then sometimes, you know, five, six, seven messages before they've actually replied. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be, over, I was just looking through one uh, before the call started, like my first message to this person, I'd connected with them about sort of April last year. So it, it sort of took 12 months to get a meeting um, and they didn't reply to any of the first eight or nine messages, whatever it took. Um, some people reply quicker, but I think that's the, you know, I've, I've used this analogy before, but like the, the concept or the analogy of compound interest, right? You're better off investing a hundred dollars now than waiting until a year's time to invest a thousand dollars. Um, but I do find that, you know, my percentage rate into it, I've been sending 50 a day for, you know, almost 12 months now. Um, but even 12 months ago, I wasn't getting, uh, quite the response, you know, I was probably booking five or six a week, maybe seven. Now I'm booking 10 a week. Um, but I think it's that sort of, you know, people are seeing the posts on LinkedIn, they're seeing polls, they're seeing, um, and also understanding that the timing has to be right, you know, for them to, to go, do you know what I am? This is something I'm interested in talking about or. I've got a problem or I'm thinking about this, even if it's a long way ahead, um, you know, the timing has to be right as well. So, 
Yeah, and I think it's a good, uh, and I'd say to people who perhaps haven't been on the programme before, and even people like myself that have um, been on it quite a while, the difficulty is, is over time, you can sort you over, you start overthinking, don't you? And you start changing mm -hmm. and tweaking all the time. Um, and then I think sometimes you run the risk of, like you say, it is just a timing thing sometimes. You know, the fact is it is just consistency and we know that we're only going to attract or hit a certain percentage. And so rather than sort of going, oh, well, I'm sending all these messages, I'm actually only getting one back or I'm sending one uh, and I'm actually only getting this back. So you change it and you change it and you change it. But ultimately, we don't know what the audience wants, do we? We don't mm -hmm. know what's going to resonate with them or when. So it's just about that consistency, like you said, and just keep doing it and event and, and believe we've said this so many times haven't we believe in the process trust in the process and ultimately it will start to come back um, but yeah. the worst thing you can do is keep swapping and changing because you can't then measure measure it can you and and sort of you know with, with the of course refine it and tweak it but mm. i think you know you just got to stick with with what you know works or what we believe works and and yeah, sort of run with it for a period of time and i think uh, again with the the analogy around compound interest is that given the model I'm using around rebooking triage calls as well, is that over time they will improve naturally because the relationship on the second or the third call is going to be far mm. better than the first call. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're booking say 30 new ones a month, plus, you know, my ratio is about a third. So if I'm rebooking 10, it won't happen straight away if I started from day dot today, but in, you know, sort of four or five months down the track, I'm now going to be doing, um, you know, 40 a month based off some of them being second calls and so on, uh, which just means the quality goes up over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be something else I would add. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dan. So I just, just want to recap on some of the things that you shared, shared with us. You're averaging about uh, two meetings a day, it takes you about 30 to 45 minutes a day to get two meetings a day. It isn't just the chat. <clears throat> um, it's, not, it's not just the chat per se, because if you look at some of the other activity, you post on LinkedIn three times a week. Um, just out of interest, um, do you post articles or do you post, um, that's not a very good way of putting it, do you post things of, it's happening in the industry or was it something that you've written yourself what's your uh both you, so both uh, uh, so there'll be some of my posts might be um kind of long you know something that's recruitment challenge focus something that might appeal to a client you know they're either having a problem with a underperforming staff member or you know they're doing a transformation and a restructure or something and and now they've got a gap in their leadership team whatever it might be um, and then some of the posts might be, I just find a leadership article. I'll write a bit of a, a blurb, you know, a bit of a summary. And then I'll say, you know, check out this article from Forbes or HBR or whoever it might yeah, be. Yeah, okay, yeah. And put the link, put the link below. Yeah, okay. And what you're doing with that, of course, is you're, you're, building, you're building your authority. So the notice is not, he's not selling anything. He's just, he's just building his authority. Uh, he's doing polls. If you haven't done a poll before, by the way, great way of generating leads. People that have voted on, that you can see who's voted on your poll and you can then start to interact with them. It is, it's an amazing way and there's no cost, there's, there's, no, there's no risk. Email campaigns. Dan's only sending out one email a week. I know people like Don and Mike uh, probably send out three or four emails a week. And the reason that we encourage you to send out more emails, most of your emails never actually get opened. Check your opening rate on your emails and you'll see it's between sort of uh, 15 to 30% opening rate. So most of your emails aren't getting opened. If you're, if anybody that knows us knows that we email every day of the week, but we know that you don't see the seven emails that we send out each week. And when we talk to people, we say, we email you on a regular basis. And they say, yeah, probably a couple of times a week, seven days a week, including Saturday and Sunday that we're emailing. Why wouldn't you do that? If you're worried about peeing people off, because you will, by the way, that's okay. They were never going to buy from you. There's a direct correlation between more, more frequent you email and the amount of business you get. Um, and, and again, don't take our word for it. You can test all this uh, for yourself. Dan's connecting with potential decision makers on a, on a daily basis. When he then connects, he's thanking them for the connection. Straight away, you're going to stand out from the crowd, just thanking them for the, uh, for the connection. He then offers them what we call a client magnet. Something that 
if they request it, you know they've got some interest in what you're doing. But notice Dan's not selling anything on the, on the second reach out. He's just saying, look, if you've got a problem in this area, this ebook, is it an ebook? Like, yeah, it is an ebook. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. ebook may, may help uh, solve the problem that you're having right now. Again, this builds your authority and helps nurture the relationship. I said at the very beginning, the client's got to know who you are. They've got to like you. They've got to trust you. And they've got to have a need for what you're doing before they're even going to consider engaging you. This is all part of the part of the process. Um, yeah, so he's, he's then offering the client magnet. Then he will ask them a question. Um, then he's going to ask them a question. Then he can engage in what we call the chat. All the templates for the chat will be in the members area uh, or in the Facebook group. Um, what this gives him, though, is 40 to 50 meetings a, a month, every month. And these are triage calls. And what it means is he's got that confidence. So Dan is deciding who he works with, when he works with them, and what the fee is going to be, not the other way around. So ultimately, Dan's controlling, controlling uh, his own de de destiny. I think the other big thing that came up for me in all this was, and Michelle touched on it, I think uh, Ines touched on it as well, you can't just kind of play at this. You can't think, well, I'll do this for a week. I'll do this for two weeks. I'll do this for a month. I can tell you, no, it won't work. You've got to do this consistently. And I always use, you know, the, the analogy of going to the gym. You can't go to the gym for a month and say, right, that's it, I'm fit. It's, it's an ongoing process. And this is exactly the same, even when you don't want to do it. Um, just very quickly, Dan, I know you're in Europe for what, five weeks, six weeks? How long were you yeah. in Europe for? Five, yeah, five weeks. Five weeks. Did you still do the chat and, and the activity whilst you were cycling around Spain? Sort drunk? of. Uh, not as much as... Um, so, yes, I still did. I did the thank you messages. I did the ebook offers. The only chat I did was the ones who then had received the ebook offer like the following week. Okay, so, yeah. I was probably doing... It probably worked out that month that I was away. To, I probably only did about 20% of the chat that I normally do. Right. Okay. Okay. But even when you're on holiday, you're just jumping on the computer and, and doing a bit of chat uh, whilst you're away. And what we know is, and, and here's the other thing, by the way, Dan's getting his appointments without picking up the phone. And Dan's only using this one method to get appointments. The fact is, there's over 100 different ways that you as a recruiter can, can generate leads. And Dan's doing one. He's getting about 40, 40 appointments a month, every single month. And we always say this, look, your success is your choice. It's what you ultimately cho choose to do. Dan, I can't thank you enough for giving up your time. And, you know, and here we are at, what, quarter past one in the morning? Is that right? It is quarter, yeah, quarter past one. You're a martyr. I'm going to get Michelle to send over one of her very expensive bottles of wine to you. Because, uh, you deserve it. That was the drunkest I've been in the whole trip was Michelle's Malbec. So the worst Excellent. hanger I've had all trip too. <laughs> yeah yes I know Michelle can be a bad influence when you get when you get in the bar with her <laughs> seriously thank you very much for joining today and thanks for thanks for sharing all that all the scripts all the templates will be will be in the members area uh, if you've got any I'll queries do I'll do them tomorrow when I'm awake how's that yeah <laughs> that's right yeah um and if you've got any queries on the, on the on the chat don't forget to join us on the on the clinic on Tuesday three o'clock on Tuesday um, all this month, you know, Dan has just shared with you one method for getting business through LinkedIn. There are numerous others. So all this month, the thing is around LinkedIn and getting business, business, getting business, getting appointments, just using LinkedIn. Um, thank you very much indeed, everybody, for joining us. Uh, but just before I say goodbye, can I just say to, to Don in the States, Dan, Don, would you mind just staying on this call? I'm going to have a quick word with you afterwards. But everybody else, thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, folks, take care. Take action and be relentless. Cheers, folks. Thanks, everyone.